I'm Duranki Ramajuraka. Please excuse me. I'm eating some gummy bears. Terrible things. But they taste really good. This video is about belonging to things. People like to belong to things. We're social critters. We like to belong to organizations, clubs, groups. There are social rewards also associated with belonging to the right groups, the right clubs. You know, if you belong to the local country club, well, good place to do some social networking with some people of affluence. Sometimes on job applications. There's a place near the end of the application to put where you're asked, you know, if you belong to any organizations, clubs, if you're a member of something, and you belong to any of these things, you know, are you a Freemason? Um, are you a member of the National Rifle Association? Maybe some old ladies like to belong to the local bridge club. These things are all right. I mean, depending on which ones they are, you know, but well, myself, I don't belong to anything. Of the sort. I, starting in my early 20s, once I moved away from my small hometown and went to New York City in the late 70s. What about them? I mean, in New York City, not so much now, but then neighborhoods were a very, very strong thing. And people had a sense of belonging to the neighborhood. But then within each neighborhood, the neighborhood I lived in, there were lots of, there were a lot of cliques, groups, you know, that uh, one of the street corners I would hang out on a lot in the evenings and at night, right by Tompkins Square Park, in what's now called the East Village, it was called Alphabet City back then. Very vibrant, volatile place, area. It was a good idea to have alliances, you know, social alliances. But there, there were a lot of groups, you know, like on a Friday or Saturday night. Right, right, you know, within, within yelling distance. There, there could be like Jesus freaks, the Rastas, um, the hippies, um, the punk rockers, the, the razor heads, the skinheads, um, uh, and then there would be combinations, you know, like the the, the Jesus skinheads, and <clears throat> there'd be all these groups, man, and, you know. You could pick them out, you know, like if you recognize somebody over there, like, oh, but you can't see the rest of the, of the people he's with, you can pretty much tell who they are, you know, oh, that, that's the motorheads over there, you know, that's the, <laughs> just from seeing one guy, I didn't belong to any of them, but I got along with all of them, <laughs> mostly you know, like, like there's certain of these 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 groups, these cliques, <clears throat> and, and by the way, th these were the real thing. You know, I mean, like the whole skinhead thing. You know, in, in San Francisco, L.A., New York, this is where these some of these things had their roots. Um, 
but some of them were were like adversarial. It wasn't like gang fights among them, but um, <clears throat> you know they they were ideologically different. Um, so some of them just wouldn't you know like certain this group over here won't talk to that group you know but but they might they might in passing be friendly with one of these other groups but when it came to me and I had two friends uh, best friends I've ever had in my life um they, they, you know uh, I, I was kind of like the the head guy of the three of us I guess um I was a little older than they were. <clears throat> but anyway, I got along with all these people. You know, I didn't belong. You know, I didn't have an affiliation. Now, I don't, that's what, my, my only immediate point here is that starting then, I just, I didn't want to belong to any group. You know, unless it was a rock and roll band or something, you know, like, you know, or something functional like that, you know, where social where cooperation is required. But I like to carve out my own way. And uh, <clears throat> I don't want to be associated with some group, organization, club. Now, if you already... I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of like telling you this as an inspiration to you. But now, it, it, because there's a danger involved in that when it comes to self-mastery and personal involvement. All right. Uh, but it, it just, just. I just also want to say here that if you already belong to these kind, you know, any any of these things, um, I'm not advocating dropping out. No, 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 no. no. You can have your memberships. It's this idea of belonging to somebody or to some larger group. Belonging. I mean, that that sounds like you're a possession. In 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 a, in a sense, to me. I'm a, I'm a member of this set, uh, and I belong to it. You know, I belong to this or that. Well, I don't want to belong. I don't. I don't. I don't want to belong to anybody or anything. I strive against to to, to not do that. You know. It, it, here, here, here's the danger. It's kind of like a false ego thing, you know. Uh, you get caught up in, in, in with the false ego. I'm not saying it's a, you know these memberships are are a false ego thing. It, it, I'm I'm making a parallel here with the false ego thing. When we decrystallize our identities what we take to be who we are what we are our identities with the, the false ego conglomerate you know com composition composite thing I mean it has, it has various parts to it when we identify with that um, and we de decrystallize that then right then we see the aspects of the, of the, of the comp, you know, the, the, the component parts, the constituent parts of the false ego as our instruments of, ex, of, of experience, expression, and energy control. They're the working parts, you know. And once, once we, get, you know, come to a point of a, a, a establishing to some extent the true self which isn't any of those things then we, we, we begin to experience and, and get practice with using those things we used to identify with as being what we are 
we, we begin to see that well, those are my tools of expression. Those are my those are my tools, and then and then we control them. We work toward controlling them uh, with the the true self at command central core control. We come to understand, we come to use our mind, our emotions, our thoughts, our bodies. Our energy, you know, our electromagnetic field. As tools. They are our tools. Of action. But those aren't who we are, who are what we are. Similarly, analogously. We can very easily get involved in these these structures, external groups, whatever. And they can kind of like start to work like that false ego thing does. We can identify with those. That's one problem with respect to self mastery, true selfhood, and so forth. You know. How many times, if you belong to any such thing, how many times have you thought, or if somebody asks you, well, tell me a bit about yourself. <clears throat> As you're answering that question, do you include your memberships, the 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 the, the, the groups, the organizations, and so forth that you belong to, are that part of your description about yourself? Even that is not necessarily problematic. What's your thinking about that? What is it? When you're, if you're, if you're including those things in your answer, like you want somebody else to know, this is part of you, what you are in this life, you know, I'm a this, I'm a that, I belong to this, I belong to that, this tells you who I am. What's your thinking about it? Are you identifying with that? Just like you would identify with the with your false ego? No. Well, I am my. Well, I am. I am my thoughts. I am my. I am my emotions. You know. I am a member of the National Rifle Association. You know, there, that's who I am. It's very easy to come to believe that. These affiliations another problem is that while we seek social life, a social life, and then we get you know, drawn into you know, little crowds that have similar interests. Well, yeah, sure. Right, right, right. But, you know, this is to be part of our uniqueness in the world. It's kind of like you know, it's like the grown-up version of a teenager who is expressing his individuality as a, as a civilized adolescent, right? Wearing a certain style of clothes, 
certain colors of hair, certain metallic accoutrements attached to the face, whatever, you know. And and you, you know, an adult, <laughs> look at the, this person, this, this adolescent, and say, well, he doesn't have the perspective yet to understand that that's not being very individual. He's part of a group. He's just following the crowd. He's just he's just another one of those kids who do that. Well, maybe the grown-up version of that to some extent. Hmm? Who's getting involved in this other crowd? Of course, if it's adults, well, then, you know, that's better, right? You know, if there's actually some purpose from your adult point of view, purpose for it, you know, you know, like uh, you belong to an automobile club, you become president of the automobile club. You know, now, you're, now you're really somebody. <laughs> you're doing your thing, right? But how much of it, if, how much your thing really is that? Hmm? There's, there's another man in that little crowd. Most important thing, though, about this is how do you think about it? How far do you go with identifying with that? Pretty easy to, to go that way. Very easy. Very easy. Because some of this stuff, regardless of the outer reasons why we get involved in some of these things, you know, clubs, organizations, and so forth, orders, secret societies, whatever. It's because we're looking for some kind of an, you know, some way to identify ourselves, and something to identify ourselves with, right? I'm right. It's not exclusively that, you know. Maybe we see some social benefit, and maybe we just want something to do with some other people with similar interests. Yes, but. How do you think about it? If you let your guard down, very easy to start identifying with, this, with these things. And it's very easy for other people to see you as identified with those things. If somebody asks, hey, tell me a bit about yourself. Don't you want them? If you, you, if you tell them, you know, like right there near the top of your list of, of of things in your ears, well, I belong to the automobile club and whatever, you know. Don't you want them to identify you with that, right? That's why you're saying it. Be careful. If you're not already affiliated with anything of the sort, nothing of the sort, you don't belong to any clubs, nothing, not a member of anything. Well, then maybe I, I told you my point of view on that and the way I live. I don't belong to anything. I don't even belong to a, a social clique. Informally, I don't. I haven't for decades. Starting back when I told you, you know, about the time I got to New York City. Shortly after high school. Let me be, let me serve as inspiration for you. Let, let, let my example 
here that I'm describing about my case, let you know that it's okay to be like that. In fact, maybe it's a good thing in a lot of ways. I could tell you this about it. If you're not familiar with this approach, with this point of view, with this way of being, <coughs> way of being in society, well then, let me tell you this. Not being affiliated with any such things makes it a lot more available to you and easier to think in terms of of uh, the sovereignty of your true self. It makes it easier for you to think about society as a whole without having your own personal biases that are group, excuse me, rooted in the club, group, organization, some political party. I don't, I don't belong to a political party. People ask me, well, who are you voting for? You know, here I am in the United States every four years we have a presidential election. Most people in this country are either Republican or Democrat. Now and then you find somebody who says, well, I'm a libertarian. Or I'm with the Green Party. I'm not with any. I'm not Republican or Democrat. That, that, that might seem like political blasphemy to a lot of people. And it kind of does to a lot of people. But I, 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 I see siding with these different, you know, like groups... These, these, you know, these, these, the, the, a, a party, a club, an organization, they, they're, it's all kind of like the same thing to me. And like, whether it's a club, an organization, some order, some this, some that. You know what? It limits things. It really does. I know many people, okay. I, I talk to them about the state of affairs in the world, and they get it. You know, they, they, may, they may have a comprehension of it, you know. And, and I may say something like, well, you know, they might talk about politics, you know, like, you know, like those liberals, man, here they are again doing this stupid shit, God, I can't. And then I point out that just two years ago, the, the Republican, this guy who's talking, right, whoever, that he voted for did the same shit. And then they kind of they just look blank in the air. Like they didn't hear that. They didn't want to hear that. And they'd like to tell me I'm wrong, but you know, this is I'm just like making this up, but I can kind of like smell these thoughts going through their head. And they just go on like they were about that, about their political affiliations with that side of the aisle, you know. It's like it's like those skinheads over there, you know, they're not going to talk to these Jesus freaks over here or, or whatever, you know. They're not going to talk to the punk rockers. I mean, hell, they're on the different sides of the street. <laughs> yeah, there's a division. It's not an aisle, it's a street. Same idea. Same idea. Same idea. And what this does is it locks people into a certain kind of thinking. They have to think like the group. You know. And especially once you're known to be affiliated with a certain organization or group or whatever, people, people will just automatically expect you to adopt the standards, the ideals, the belief system of that group. Now you see, it's easy to fall into step with that too. It, it gives you a way to think. 
it pretty much tells you what to think. And then you come up with this idea that this is what you've chosen to think. Well, maybe there was an ex some degree of that at some point, but it tends to just get lost in the past and the belief that it's all just your thinking kind of like stays there, but it's not really pointing to anything actual anymore. So I'm trying to help you out here. I'm not saying drop all affiliations. I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your life. I'm trying to tell you how to think about it. If you're interested in the purpose of this channel and why I'm sitting here saying anything at any time in the video, your personal involvement, you're moving away from consciousness hijacking and perception deception. Mind control through perception control. Does this sound a little bit, do, do, do these things here that I just said moving away from about sound a little bit like what I was just saying can happen with your affiliations? Being, being belonging to this clan, this group, that club, this, this organization, you know, this click, that click. And compare that to how, if you have a teenager, how your teenager thinks about being part of a clique that he or she belongs to, that you may see is just ridiculous. Some little phase that'll, you know, like, it's not much different. Is it? It's just your notion of a mature way of going about it. It's a matter of how you think about it. Oh, well, that's about it, man. I take up almost a half hour to say this. Somebody has been talking about to, to me, you know, like lately. Uh, every every so often um, mentioning you know uh, um, you know uh, the, 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 the the unfortunate side of the notion of being a man in, of the crowd you know just another like like when you see um, little video clips of let's say New York City near Times Square you know there's thousands of people thousands filling the sidewalks all just walking barely looking at each other a lot of them you know and they're just like all these heads bobbing around bobbing down the sidewalk and it's hordes of people and you look at them and you look at these video clips like they're trying to make a point, you know, they're, they're, try, they're trying to talk, they're trying to, they're, they're referring, you know, in large, usually they're, 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 they're conveying that idea, you know, like, look, they all look alike, they're all just a person in the crowd. They're all walking in the same direction over there. Over here, they're walking in another direction. It's like a rhythm to it. You know? If you look at it, like a swarm. Well, that's it. All right. I'm Thranky Ramadrag. Be well.